In this week's race guide, race A, I get pushed into a wall. In race B, well, we have a massive drag race towards the line. And in race C, it's radical time as we make it three wide. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2023. Week 30 presents a very interesting week this week. Now, race A in the background. Yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. It is Group 4, specifically all-wheel drive cars of Group 4. What else are we doing here at Grand Valley South? I didn't say where we were. Well, we are doing five laps. It's a grid start and we are racing hard tires. So you've got a selection of Group 4 cars to pick. They are all all-wheel drive. Uh, and that is all you do. You pick one of those cars and you go racing. This has a very touring car-esque feel. And what I highly recommend you try it out, actually. It's quite an interesting race, to be honest with you. And really does give you a sense of, well, racing, to be honest, which we sometimes lack in Gran Turismo. But not this time, not this week. If you're not interested in race A, uh, there are some timestamps there for you to jump to race B or race C if you so choose. But we ain't jumping anywhere, folks. Over then into race A and have a look at my start. Right, here we go then, folks. At the start, you can see not many people qualified, but people picking their choice of car for this one. I put traction control on one. I also put brake balance to plus five. You can change brake balance here. I'm also holding the handbrake. Don't do this. I was waiting for the lights, but of course, there is no full start check on this one. So everybody jumps past me, and I'm like, why did I get such an awful start? Because it's just foot to the floor, and off you go. Don't hold the handbrake. Just keep accelerating, and you will be fine. So we did lose a couple of positions there. As we head in towards turn one then. And look how close and tight this pack is up ahead. So we've got Subarus in here. We've got another Bugatti Veyron in Shelty there. Behind me, I have a Genesis. There is also in this one. I think there's a Lamborghini in there, maybe. I know you can pick a Lamborghini. I know that is in there because I nearly picked one myself. But uh, Bugatti Veyron was at the top of the leaderboard, which is why I chose it as we head down here up into this tight section very quickly. Oh, we've got an Atenza up ahead. I just saw that as we go into the braking zone. Then that Genesis looking around the outside. That's Fusion Sniping looking to get the job done. Are they going to do it? Not quite. We're stuck behind Mr. Rona then. And Hodgson has that penalty up ahead in the Subaru as we head towards this right-hander. Now, I said about touring car feel. This is why I feel like it feels like a touring car race. Everybody's very close in this race. And you're just fighting for the little bits of tarmac that you can see. So if there's a piece available, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll take that or I'll take this. I'm not sure actually what car to go for in the race, to be honest. I chose the Bugatti Veyron because, A, it's top of the leaderboards, as I've just said, but also because it's got very good top-end speed. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I can get something to work here on the start-finish straight, and that's how I can gain some positions. So you can see here we're catching Mr. Rony then as we go on the inside of that Subaru heading towards turn one. I'm looking to be the last of the late breakers then as they, well, they were the last of the late breakers, but they go a bit deep here. Going to continue on through and they're going to go into the barrier then and we're going to take that position as we advance further on in the race. So we're up to P9 then. We catch up to Hodgson then. Lap number three. Again, look at this gap. Look at how close the racing is. It's two and a half seconds, 2.7 seconds to the race lead. Everybody is that close. Okay, we go to the final lap. The gap is still the same here. People are fighting all over the show. I wasn't sure where to go for the move here at all, as you can see as we go into here. We've got the uh, old Alfa Romeo in there as well, the 155. That is a nice sounding car. And obviously that is touring cars. So, you know, it does give you that feel as we head down the hill then. But what we want to do is focus up ahead. There's people go side by side. Very dangerous to go in this corner. We just see one of those alphas head off into the barrier. They get a one and a half second penalty for that barrier contact. We all slow it down nicely as we then go into the right. So there's bits of contact happening here. Constantine effect happening as well as we go into the left there. Again, that happening as we go through here. So Lulu, 1.5 second penalty. Avoid hitting the barriers there. It seems like the barrier penalties are on strong. And you'll see a bit more of that as we go through this race. Going to try around the outside then. This is the main corner I think you can overtake on if you want to go for that run down the outside as we head towards this last corner now very hard corners to get right i will explain it in the lap guide of course but coming through here just not left just enough room there by lulu i'm sure that was a mistake constant has got one and a half second penalty up ahead as well so as long as i stay close here i should get one or two positions as we cross the line. In fact, I finished P6. Grove Street Race has got one and a half second penalty. Lots of penalties on that last lap for corner cuts there and barrier contacts. But actually, quite a good race to be honest with you. I just noticed that made plus as well. Woo! As we head towards turn one then. Let me give you this lap guide. Uh, as we go into the braking zone then, as the white line goes straight, it's just after the 300 board on the left. That is your brake marker, okay? And you're actually going to point towards the apex. Don't stick it to the left. Point towards the apex of the corner. You can keep it tight or go for a bit of a V-shape. 
depending on what you want to do here. I'm keeping it quite tight. A little bit of a V. And what I'm looking for there is the sand and the concrete where they both meet there on the right side. That is my accelerating marker, okay? Now, I'm in third gear in the Veyron. Your gears may vary depending on the car you're using, etc., etc. The Lambo's got seven gears, for example. But just make sure you're in the right gear to accelerate out of the corner. Lots of power in the bottom end of this Veyron. And you don't want oversteer either on the exit. Now, this is where it gets tricky, okay? As you come down here, you want to keep it really tight to the left, okay? And again, as the line goes straight, you can see it's turning and goes straight. That is when you're going to be braking. And you're going to want to turn in quite tight here. You sort of want to carry the momentum and the weight of the car into the corner as you go down the hill. Very hard to demonstrate, but as you start doing this race more and more, you'll start to get a feel for it. Notice how I turn in here. I'm trying to keep the momentum going, and then I want to accelerate as early as possible. Be careful track limit penalties on that corner. If you cross the white line too much, trying to stick towards the left-hand side, you will get a penalty. Now, as that line goes straight, so as this corner goes straight here, that is your brake marker, okay, for this right-hander. Now, you want to chuck it in quite hard here. So it's normally a dab of the brakes. Chuck it in and let the momentum of the car go through the corner, as I do there. Now, on the right side, you've got that dip there. You can see a bit of the grass as that leaves the edge of your screen on the right side that is your brake marker it's essentially as you go straight on this little bit of straight here okay it's at the exact same moment so if you don't want to use that just as you go straight you're going to hit the brakes and turn in early in the veyron because obviously it's carrying a lot of weight here and you want to cut the inside of that as much as possible now as you head towards this left hander it depends where you're on the circuit of course in terms of your braking you can either use the edge of that sign there on the left and it's just after that leaves your screen or use the shadow which is right in front of you i found the shadow is quite useful but obviously day and time and the sunrise do or sun does change its position so you do have to be careful about using the shadow but it was very helpful in this situation now on exit so you can boot it out of there quite easily to be honest with you head over towards that left hand side then and what we're looking for is the end of the barrier on that left hand side that is your brake marker now this is the corner i said you could overtake on okay and what i mean is on the exit not the entrance because what you could do is really carry the momentum and slow down for the following corner so depending on how you feel, you can either brake, chuck it in and go for it or really slow down and go for a wider line into the next corner. You can see here, I've gone for a more aggressive line and that yellow sign on the left-hand side is my brake marker for the left-hander. Because I'm going for a tighter line, I'm going to have to slow down a bit more, but obviously you could be more aggressive there and go for the overtake. So if you are defending a position, be careful of this moment, okay? Be careful of this on the track. I'm slowing the car down massively, accelerate out quite quickly here. And as you head towards this final corner, it's a long sweeper, the... But the gantry, oh sorry, the arm code going into the bricks there. That is your brake marker. The first of the hay bales up ahead. That is sort of you get ready to accelerate marker, okay? And you're sort of braking and trying to turn as much as you can as you're going to here. So I'm trying to accelerate, get it round and go. So I accelerate a bit too late there because the car wouldn't turn. The earlier you can accelerate, the better. Remember, it's a long straight here as we head towards the line then. And I get, what, 11.3 there. Not too bad at all. There's definitely more time in there. There's definitely 10s. But there you have it. So we jump to race B then. We're at Daytona in group three, actually. So GT3 at Daytona. It's quite a common combo, really. Uh, but what else are we doing here? Well, it's four laps. So it's a Rapido race. And we're on racing hard tyres. Rolling start. And you pick... Whatever Group 3 car you like. So I chose a Toyota Supra, but that Peugeot Vigil Gran Turismo car is looking very strong here this week. But if it's the strongest, I can't use it for beat the meta, annoyingly. Anyway, let's jump to the race. Let's have a look exactly what happens. Right, here we are then in the Toyota Supra. Once again, you can change the brake balance on this, which might explain why the Peugeot Vigil Gran Turismo car is a little bit better than normal because that car is atrocious in corners. And obviously, if you're plus five on the brake balance, it just turns that little bit better. And that might be what we're seeing. Now, you did just see the subscribe button appear there. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to the channel. We're on our journey to 40k, and I appreciate all the support on that journey. We have one heck of a special plan for 40k, so, uh, yeah, do be warned. It's a big one. It is a big one. Now, we see Chelsea there get a little bit of oversteer there in the Vision Grand Tourism car. We take full advantage of that as we head into the right-hander. And we see we end up in a bit of a three-wide scenario there. I think she's just made a small mistake there. Nothing major. Again, they backed out of it completely. I was trying to avoid Chelsea as well at the same time. But we all survived, so it's all good. It's all fair, and we carry on racing here as we head towards the kink then and in towards the very hard braking zone here at the right-hander. But the Corvette goes off there. TCR Carmody there does catch it. Though somebody else off towards that left. Two people off, in fact, towards that left. We're getting three positions in one corner. Yes, I'll take that every day of the week as we head down towards this corner, then the left up before the oval. We get a tap from behind there. A bit frustrating, but all the same, they wait for me because the TCR driver, and they race fair. So thank you so much there, Karma D. That's appreciated. We all make mistakes. I make plenty of them, and that was just a mistake, and we still keep our position as we continue on through then and head towards the chicane, the bus stop chicane then. 
So this corner, obviously, is one where you do have to be careful in terms of your braking. And you can see behind here, Chelsea catching me at speed of sound here because I've got damage as well on that rear rear wing it's actually costing me speed here as we go into here shelty just dies out of the way there oh our brakes themselves not too sure we're gonna have a look at the bloopers later on i've not seen it yet so we'll have a look at it shortly uh, and as we continue on out there we do actually catch up to disco stew in the house disco stew hello uh cheesy here going for the run on me i saw damage after the chicane there so that helped cheesy actually get up to speed in that slipstream as we go into the braking zone then Cheesy's just on that outside then as we go into left hand. It gives me some room on that exit. Continue on through. Bit of oversteer there for Cheesy as we go. Oh, hello. Somebody's off there. I'm not sure what's going on there. Well, Cheesy gets a bit of oversteer, I think, and heads off to Narnia then on that right hand side as we go into the sharp right hander then. So, unfortunately, Cheesy losing that one. But hey, we're still in the race, so we'll carry on racing here with Disco Stew in that Red Bull Peugeot. Vision a Grand Turismo car as we go into the left-hander and head towards the break-ins on there. Where's Stu going to go? Stu sticking towards that inside. And we're going towards the outside then. Varg unfortunately goes off in that 4 GT. So we're sort of in the middle here. But Disco Stu defends that very nicely indeed. Going to keep that position as we head towards the left-hander. I wasn't going to go for the move here because it's like a slipstream scenario here. So if you've only got one car ahead of you, just wait till the oval and go for the move there. Now Stu, I'm not sure what happens here with Stu. It's like he gets a bit of wheel spin and then loses a lot of speed. So we go around the outside of Stu on the oval. Very unusual for that to happen, but we'll take that as we go into P7. And uh, we'll see what Stu decides to do in the Red Bull machine. Actually, gives me a bit of a bump draft there. Thank you, Stu. I appreciate that one. As we advance to lap three, we see Danny coming on there. Danny, oh, hello. I, got, I did get a bit scared there, to be honest with you. I was like, Danny, stay to the right. If you own ghost now, it's carnage. But uh, hey, we all lived, we all survived. We get a good run on oh, Jammy, then also part of TCR, as we see this now. Around the outside of the Porsche. The Porsche are going to struggle with the top end speed here. Uh, we get the job done up into P5. We go as we go into this braking zone. Do we get it stopped? We do indeed. Just avoid pitting ourselves on that left-hand side. That's a very common occurrence. We'll see that this week, I'm sure. I've got a few shorts of that as well. So on the oval for the final time then, heading towards the bus stop. We've got Danny behind us here as we go into the braking zone. I'm trying to give a good or get a good run through here on the exit then. Can we do this? We can indeed. Danny gives me a bit of a bump draft there. That costs them a bit of time then as we continue onto the oval. Danny's going to be in the slipstream though. Going to be very close as we go towards the line. And you see that slipstream playing a factor now as Danny goes towards that outside. But I'm on the inside of the oval, which does count for something then. As we head towards the line then, it's going to be me versus Danny. And look at this. Look at that radar. It's so close. But I'm thinking, okay, I can go down off the oval a little bit here. Maybe gain some time. And that's what I'm going to try and do. Down we go. Do we get it? Not quite there. Five thousand. So you can see me say that as well. Five thousand to the second there from Danny. Good little race there at the end with Danny. And a very interesting race. Lots of little contacts there. You do have to be careful on this one. In terms of the lap guide then, heading towards turn one. You're looking for that white line before the corner starts. Okay, there. That is your brake marker. So it starts turn in and hit the brakes. You may want to ease off the brakes a little bit if you are just going a bit too straight initially. Because remember, you can't 100% brake and 100% turn. But you can adjust that accordingly. Let's see, brake 10% turn. Just keep thinking about that scenario and it should help you improve your trail braking. As we go into the side hand, be careful on the exit. Power oversteer, a common occurrence. We saw that with Cheesy in the race as we go on through here and head over towards that left hand side. And what we're looking for on the right. It's the one board there. As that leaves your screen then, you're going to hit the brakes. Okay. At this corner, very tricky corner to get right. Just because of the way it is, it's a very clunky corner, I'd like to say. Okay. So as you hit the brakes, sometimes you'll go a bit deep and come back and have a very nice line on exit. Sometimes you'll come in tight, stay tight, and then run out really far wide. So in this situation, notice I'm not too bad there, but I do use all circuit on the exit. I'd advise you do use that as well. It'll stop some of the power oversteer if you straighten up that steering a little bit. Through the kink, which is flat. Happy days. We like flat corners. Heading towards this braking zone, though. On the left-hand side, you got that long piece of tarmac, but it darkens in the middle. That is my brake marker as it darkens on the left-hand side. So as that leaves the edge of your screen, okay, you're going to hit the brakes. Brake in a straight line for this corner. Brake in a straight line. 100% braking. And then you're going to ease off the brakes and start to turn into the corner, okay? Notice I'm 100% braking. I start to come off the brakes. I'm trying to turn now and get a good line on exit. I didn't really hit the apex there, but it's because I actually want to straighten the car out just to accelerate out. Lots of power over here on that corner in a lot of cars. So just be careful on that one. Head towards the left before the oval then on the right side. As that tarmac veers off to the right, the start of that is my brake marker for this left. I like to brake early for this one, keep it tight, and then accelerate onto the oval. If you run out wide, you're sort of delaying the throttle a little bit, and then you sort of be, you're going to get aggressive with the throttle. So I like to turn in early. Notice how I'm not using all the exit there at all. I'm trying to get on the throttle as quick as possible. 
while yes you see i lose a little bit of time overall i actually prefer this line over running out wide because it's just a bit more dangerous running out wide there Head towards the bus stop then, you've got that flag marker. It's in between the two and the one. As that leaves the edge of your screen at the top, that is when you're going to break for this corner, okay? You can try and get as close to the one board as you possibly can, but at one moment, you will go too deep. So use this as your indicator, but you can try and push yourself a little bit once you get used to it. So as that's left the edge of your screen, I'm breaking. Use all the curb on the right, using all the curb on the left, on the, sorry, left then the right. And then you can use all the curb on the exit as well, okay? It won't give you a penalty. It's only if you're not on the curb will it give you a penalty. That's it then in terms of this lap. Let's jump to uh, race C then, where we're in the radicals at Road Atlanta, which is an interesting combo. I do say so myself. Now, I like driving the radicals, except for the gear change, which is horrendous. What are we doing here then? Well, we're doing 13 laps. It's a grid start with that false start check. Sports hard tyres and a pit stop is required. And that's all you need to know. So pick a radical, off you go and race 13 laps. Double shift where you can. I'll explain that more in the track guide as well. Or the lap guide, should I say. But without further ado, let's jump straight in then. Let's experience this race. We did a little bit. Radical. Right then, let's begin then with the grid start. False start check on this one. So now you do need to hold the handbrake in this one, unlike race A. But I put traction control I'm on just in case. So hold the handbrake, which is circle for me. Get ready. Foot to the floor. Oh, Jamie's jumped the start here. I started second gear as well, which is an interesting one. I think this works as well, to be honest. Unfortunately, Jamie just unghost when I didn't want him to unghost there. Not Jamie's fault at all. I was hoping I could get back on circuit, but I couldn't quite do it. And then we get back on there. So our nice start actually got ruined there. But it wasn't Jamie's fault, you know. He couldn't go anywhere. He doesn't expect to be unghosted where he did. So it is what it is. We do go on the outside of oh, Jammy, though. So we do get that position. And we're still in this race, aren't we? We are. Oh, hello. Somebody's off towards that left-hand side. Who is that? Oh, they've stayed off towards that left-hand side. Oh, they got TCR livery. Oh, no. It's Blue Thunder. Oh, no. Oh, dear. TCR driver is off. We'll have a look at that one in the bloopers then as we continue down here. Oh, bit of a frame drop there with all these cars in play. It's a bit frustrating on the PS5. I've got to be honest, those frame drops. Anyway, we'll continue on through then. We're racing Fusion here as we look down the inside there. I'm going to make it three wide. We have to be careful if you do this, remember. You have to make it extremely early if you're going three wide. And we do get past Cheesy then and Fusion keeping that place for now. As we go into the right-hander then, and through we go. And notice we're in third gear. Now, we're going to be trying the double shift. So if you've ever seen my frustration in this race, it's not because of a player. It's because of the double shifting you have to do in this race. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it loses you half a second quite easily sometimes. All right, going into towards the right then of the chicane. And, oh, hello, Fusion going into the pits early then. So we'll go past Fusion. Now, I decided not to go in early because of the gap that just had been created here. I thought, okay, gives me a good second to try and catch up to people. But I caught up to them very quickly, actually. Quick through here, everyone has slowed down quite a lot. And I thought, okay, maybe I've got a run going on here. You can see the Portuguese driver just go a bit slow. So I'll go down the inside here. And unfortunately, I don't think they realized I was there. And unfortunately, there's a bit of contact. We both survived, though. And they actually do relinquish that position as well. Uh, but I've got dirt on my tires at this moment. So I'm just going to understeer slightly off here. And I'm going to get a penalty, which I was a bit frustrated about, to be honest with you. Because I was just like, ah, come on. But uh, it is what it is. We continue on with the race then as we go in to the right-hander. You know, it's just one of those where somebody went for a gap, which was me in this situation. I was entitled to go for that gap, or at least I believe I was. We'll check in the bloopers, actually, just to be sure. Uh, and then we'll, yeah, it just a bit of contact. Even so, we head towards the penalty line then. We take that penalty, so dropping down two positions, back down to P12 then. Cheesy goes a bit deep here as we go through here. I'm actually going to go around the outside of Cheesy. Look at that. I'm actually going to come in the pits now because I realize I'm being held up quite a lot then. So I come in the pits. I do cross that yellow line on the right. He doesn't give me a penalty. But there are penalty pit... No, sorry. Pit penalty times being applied for crossing the white line. There we go. Or yellow line in this case. Don't change tires. Don't change fuel either. So it's just an in and out scenario here. A Joe collap, we should call it. As we come out of here and we're right behind Fusion then. And who's... Oh, hello. Shelty was there as well. Hello, Shelty. So we come up with, oh, Chelsea. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> right, okay, here we go. We've got the race to go on now. We've got some moves to make. I felt I was quite quick here. I did get the rank two time very early on in the day, but it had, it had already just come out, to be fair, because I wanted to get you the track guide as well. But even so, hey, we got it. Happy days indeed as we continue on through then. So Shelty up ahead. We've got a bit of a run on Shelty. So I was like, okay, do I go for the run or do I stay behind? I was like, okay, I'm going to just go for the run here. Down in towards the right-hander. We get it stopped nicely. Look at this beautiful racing with Shelty. Always oh, beautiful. Shelty's probably a bit frustrated. Like, Tidge, why are you going for it here, your weapon? I like racing you, Shelty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. So we're going to continue on out here. And you're going to see me put my hands up again. This isn't for Shelty. It's for the gear change. 
There you go. Damn it, man. I hate it. Are you, you're spamming that upshift, and sometimes it only does one. Sometimes it does two. And, uh, yeah, this time it did two for four to six, so I didn't lose that much out. Oh, Hodgson's got a penalty there. We overtake Hodgson. We've got a good run on Shelty here. In sick gear, then in towards the breaking zone. Have we got it stopped? Yes, we do. Woo, just there. We get it stopped. Through we go. So up into P12 again then as we continue on at three. We've got Jesse to catch up to. So the very next lap, we catch up to Jesse on the straight. What's going to happen here? We get a double shift to six. Woo, it works. We did it, folks. We did it this time. So we should have a good run on Jesse then as we go down the hill towards the chicane. We're purple as well. Hello. Master slaps. Incoming, folks. In towards the breaking zone we go. We're side by side. We get it stopped. Yes, we do. Jesse actually went a bit deep there as well as we go on through. Up into P10 then. Someone was obviously in the pits on the previous lap as well. But hey, we'll take that as we're now in P9. So we're taking somebody else in the pits. We've got Varg up next in the... Well, he's in a radical, of course. In a very green radical. Goes defensive then. With Sif gear in towards the breaking zone. They break a bit early there. Not sure whether they were letting me go or not, but we take that. We've also got a purple lap there. It's nice indeed. 31-6 so far. We'll see what that drops down to during the race then. But we advance further on lap 9 now. We're down to a 31-3. We are just flying on these laps. As we catch up to Jammy. Jammy hasn't pit yet. Uh, so Jammy just struggling a little bit in the Radical as we drop a gear for this right-hander. And we're going to belt on out of here. Now, can we get the gear change right this time? We're a bit too close to Jammy, to be honest with you. Third, fifth. Woo! We did it! So, yeah, that's what you got to do, folks. Third to fifth or fourth to sixth. That's the sort of thing you're after. Now, I would argue actually staying fifth if you're in fifth for this as long as you're not in slipstream, this straight here. Because when you change to sixth, you might gain half a tenth, but it's you're going to be able to break better into the chicane, okay? Especially with the marker I use. So I stayed in fifth there, and it worked out well, you see. You notice that. We get a good line through the chicane, and we're looking to try and catch up to Mario Sonic. That gap has come down from over three seconds. We advance towards the final lap then, where we have been pushing on. That's what 31-2 now. We are, I'll say, we are pushing. We are pushing. 30 is definitely possible in the race as well as we head towards this double right hand. That was the second part of that. And up ahead, we catch up to Please Don't Crash Me. Now, I realised they hadn't been in the pits. The top two hadn't been in the pits either. So I knew this was a fight for the lead with Mario. I get the gear wrong there. You see my frustration once again. Do we get it right for the... No. Again, we don't get it right. So that's going to cost us a bit more time here. But this is a fight for the actual lead. The overall race win as we head towards the final corner. Mario Sonic is just ahead of Please Don't Crash Me. So I was hoping they might just stay out of the way a little bit. Maybe they hadn't read the rules. But they do defend it on the inside line when they are going to lose a position here. So we're going to go through the right-hander. And I was just like, ah, so close. So I said, that's frustrating. You can see my smile there. It was frustrating because obviously they're going to lose a place anyway. They haven't realized you have to pit. But that's what you get for the first race of the day. And going through here, I just do a bit of a crash at the finish there. And we do get P2 in the end. So it says A there. I was A plus in race A. A plus in race A because that was the last race I actually did. And uh, yeah, I'm happy I'm back as an A plus driver. Woo! Right, track guide time. Here we go then. Turn number one. We're looking on the left-hand side for the orange painted barrier or the tyres behind that, okay? Now, this is a fifth gear corner fifth gear because you can absolutely send it in this corner and the car will sort of do like a four-wheel drift essentially and it's really nice feeling actually if you get it right so coming into here fifth gear gonna go through this corner i actually don't drift there look i lose a lot of time because i don't do that by gaining a bit on exit there a uh, bit unusual actually that i gain so much there's definitely more time in turn one right okay this one more an important corner okay the start of the curve is sort of your warning that you're going to break and the line that you'll see it so as the curb comes the most into the circuit there's a line there as well white line that is your brake marker and you'll turn in as well at the same time you want to abuse that curb on the right and just keep your foot to the floor and it should stick notice how i'm getting a bit of oaks here now that's the four wheel drift i wanted on turn one going through here then i click the curb there be careful about using the grass here it can get a bit sketchy heading up here then as the curb goes straight you're going to follow that curb okay that is your braking line and you can 100 percent brake on it because it's a straight line it's amazing isn't it we always say break in a straight line is a perfect straight line there for you to break on. So fourth gear, stay in fourth gear for this corner, okay? And again, you want that four-wheel drift through this corner if you can. We don't quite get it there, but it's very stable, and it's stable enough there where we do get a good run out of the corner. But the four-wheel drift into a straight is much quicker as well. Head towards the right-hander then. On the right side, you've got a piece of tarmac that appears out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, it goes to Narnia, if you didn't know. On the right, there's a piece of grass that joins that. That is your marker for this corner. Again, you're going to stay in fourth gear for this corner because you want to accelerate through the corner. Be aggressive in this corner, okay? So you're going to notice I'm going to go on the throttle. There we go. Trying to accelerate as much as I can. And on the right side, there's a piece of grey bit. It then goes dark and another piece of grey bit. 
in the race is a little red uh, canopy there that you can use, okay? But that's it in time trial. That is your brake marker for this right-hander. Drop a gear, third gear for this corner. You might be able to use fourth, but I found third gear a little bit quicker. I did try this a couple of laps and third gear was definitely quicker because you're already low down in the revs. So continue on out of that corner. Now we're going to double shift to fifth, hopefully. There we go. Happy days indeed. That worked. And don't go to sixth gear, okay? You're going to lose like half a tenth maybe, but you're going to be so much better in the braking here from the engine braking. Now, I've actually gone to sixth frustratingly there, but I, fifth gear is going to be better, trust me. Uh, so 200 board on the right-hand side. That is your brake marker, okay? You're going to brake and you're going to want to slow this down. You're going to want to take a tight line for the left to have a nice run on the right, okay? So that's what I'm doing here. Notice I slowed it down more than I need to. And then I want to throttle and accelerate all the way through this corner as I do there. Now, you can do a triple gear shift down here if you wanted or you can do a double shift but whatever you do don't change gear again then okay so you can have jump to sixth or jump to fifth and that's a lap guide here in the radical so it's quite a hard car to drive i'm a bit frustrated with race c because of the double shifting it's bloopers time though what happened to all these 1.5 second penalties then in race a well you can see lulu just ran a bit too wide there came back on there tried to avoid everyone to be fair not what not anywhere to go and Consta and Grove also hit the barrier there on the right there so they all end up 1.5 second penalties from their own accord Right, what happened here then? Into the right-hander we go. Oh, oh. I mean, it looked like a takeout, but he was trying to avoid avoid Hodgson, I think. But I think you could have done a, maybe a bit better job there, Lewis. Um, but then gets five-second penalty. Um, so it accelerates away. Probably to take that five-second penalty. Now, Shelty. Here we go. Gives me a nice little bump draft. Thank you, Shelty. And then it is towards the break-in zone. Looks like he's going to hit me. Actually hits the barrier instead to avoid that. A bit like I did at Le Mans. Superb driving from Shelty. Comes back on and lives to fight another day. Beautiful driving from Shelty. What happened to Danny then on the exit here? Too much wheel spin. That's because of third gear. If you're really low in the RPMs, that's what it happens in the Supra. And then, yeah, Danny's going to come back on the circuit. And I'm going to have my little scare uh, as we then advance to the Radicals. So what happened to TCR player then? This was a blue funder going into the right-hander then. Turns it in here. Shelty's just on the right. Oh, there's the tiniest of taps there. To be fair, Shelty was on the inside. It's just turning in just a bit too much there. Tap Shelty and that just... The ping pong physics sent you off there. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate, to be honest with you. Came back on, but then unfortunately, with the dirt on the tyres, go straight back off. Now, was my move valid on the Portuguese driver? That is the next question then. So going in towards the right then, we do carry a lot of momentum into this corner as we go through here. And, oh yeah, we're clearly alongside at that point. Yeah, that was fair. That was fair. That was okay to me, to be honest. Um, and they just didn't see me, so it's all good there. As we go into the left, you can see here, I'm just going to go off those track limits and get that 0.5 second penalty. Unfortunately, folks, that is it for this week's race guide. If you liked it, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel, stay in touch with all the latest content, as always. Two videos to check out, including Beat the Meta from last week, if you've not seen it already. It's the Dodge Viper. And whether we do it or not, that is the question. I'll say a big thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in another video or live stream again very soon.